Look at us. How many gotta, times? Got a whole thing can, going. Live, can we fuck up the intro and not have to delete them? Well, is that a challenge? <laughs> yeah, we got to get it right in one one shot. One opportunity. We only get we got one shot. <laughs> don't don't lose, lose your, yourself in the music. That's in the what. Yeah, that's what I'm going for, baby. Yeah, a mo. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Hard at Play, Roommates Gaming, <laughs> no longer bi-weekly video game focused podcast. My name is Justin, with me are Josh and Eric as always, and we're here to talk about some video games. Before we do that, I want to let you right know that on. you guys can find us on youtube.com slash roommates gaming and all of us on Twitch. Our handles will be in the YouTube video posted for this. I assume they're on Twitch as well, but honestly, I don't know. I, Eric's shaking his head, so I'm getting a no on that. I'm going to move on. You can also find us on audio platforms wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Um, this one is a little bit different. It's live on Twitch right now. So if you're not in the chat room, you're letting us down. Uh, <laughs> This is going to be a different experience for us, folks. So please bear with us. I want to let you uh, want to let you know a couple of updates. Number one, uh, the spring circuit didn't happen uh, last year. <laughs> like uh, from last year, yeah, yeah, that yeah. didn't happen. So uh, a lot of things didn't happen last year. I have a beard and long hair, and Josh has a beard and shaggy hair, and Eric has a beard. None of that's really new, but you know they're a little bit more wild than they used to be. Strictly Eric because has no hair. Of, do what now? I said, Eric has there's, no hair. There's hair on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed a lot with the wonderful existence of 2020, but we're happy to finally be back at this and doing some form of the thing that we enjoyed to do so much. So, uh, with all that good stuff out of the way, please make sure you're still catching our videos on YouTube as they go up on Mondays for our gameplays. And these podcasts will go up on Fridays whenever the fuck we feel like recording one right now because we're trying to get a schedule worked out for that to be consistent uh hopefully we can do that again because we miss doing things like this um with all that being said guys it's been a long long time since we did one of these months seven months something like that seven months yeah it's been like six or seven months since we since we did one because it was 20 or it was 2020 but it was august or september Oh shit! Then yeah. yeah, I guess it has been a pretty long time. But yes. yeah, that is right. We haven't done the podcast in a long time. Yeah, we uh we hit a huge hiatus there. We did uh we did the Last of Us Part Two. We did another podcast. I think we did one more after that, and then we just kind of dissipated for a while. So we're back. And since 2020 is finally over, we want to talk about it just a little bit. Not exactly the events of 2020, but you know, video games. Um, what came out, what we liked, what we played, what we didn't play, things we might have spent money on that were difficult to come by, and I lost a lot of sleep over, but finally, finally managed to get. Uh, so, a whole lot of stuff we're going to dive into. Before I do that, gentlemen, anything you want to plug, add, what did I miss, what did I mess up? Uh, I don't think you really missed or messed up anything. Um, now you're perfect. Perfect. Um, I mean, yeah, you covered pretty much everything. I think we should just let's just jump right in. <laughs> let's just let's do it, man. Let's just let's just jump right into it. All right, 2020 sucked. There was a lot of bad things that happened in that year, uh, but. <laughs> We're not going to focus on the bad things that happened. We're gonna, well, maybe a couple of bad things like game delays, but those are usually good because they mean you get a finished product. Uh, closer to finished product. <laughs> um, and that you don't have to refund a bunch of money to consumers that don't believe they got a finished product. <laughs> uh, so that they were told wasn't going to be finished when they released it and shouldn't have gotten refunds. Are you talking about Cyberpunk? <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about uh, this. Uh, no Man's Sky. Yeah, we were talking about No Man's Sky. Yeah. I got my Cyberpunk refund, but we'll get to that too. Ladies and gentlemen, diving into the Hard to Play podcast. In the year 2020, a, a slew of video games came out that we didn't get to talk about at the end of the year. We did talk about The Last of Us Part Two, which came out relatively early in the year, the first half. Uh, 
we didn't get to talk about Ghost of Tsushima, but that's a good thing because I never finished it until New Year's, right before New Year's. Yeah, you and, took forever. We were all waiting. We we're like, yeah, man, we want to talk about Ghost. And you're like, I haven't even really played it. I'm like, the fuck's wrong with you, Justin? Yeah, see, I got, I pre ordered it. I started playing it when it came out. I'm like, this game is amazing. And then I took a family vacation to the beach with my children because That's they had really been cooped up. up inside doing schoolwork at home and being at home all day. So went to the beach, just me, the kids, my wife, we go to the water, come back, go get food, go to the water, <laughs> come back, go get food. That's what we did. And it was great because it was just us. We're isolated. Uh, but then when I get back, I pick up my controller. I'm like, I don't remember how to play this game. So I'm kind of intimidated to jump into it. And I just didn't like put it off and I put it off and I put it off and to, uh, to let's just go ahead and just cross ghosts off. Cause we're here now. Uh, <laughs> we, Actually, we, we, we started not a so why not? 2020 year wrap up. This is a ghost. ghost, is a the ghost this is the ghost cast. cast. I waited way too long to play what is now my third favorite game of all time. It is so damn good. And the fact that I had it and it just sat there and sat there and sat there and I never dove into it, it just irritates the shit out of me now <laughs> because I can't, I can't tell you how many times my wife came home from work because she works uh, until eight o'clock in the evening. She'll come home around 8.30 or nine. She'll walk in and say, what's going on? And I'd be like, I found this mountain and this mountain had a fox on it. And I followed this fox over this waterfall and then I killed this guy. <laughs> <laughs> like it's great and there yes. were multiple times she'd walk through the room and i'm just like playing around in photo mode i'm like i love every minute of this so so much it's so good yes well how did you play because i know that like when we were when it was out we were all like talking about how we played like in the discord and stuff like that um and everybody kind of seemed to have like their own kind of play style how did how did you how did you play I played that game like I was Kane and walked the earth. And when I went up to somebody's compound, I'm like, I'm going to fuck you up. I let them know in advance, like respectfully, <laughs> you're going to die. And then I would go in and just slaughter people. And on the, the, the events where I didn't kill somebody and I died myself, it just, you know what? I respect that guy for what he did. I respect the decision <laughs> you made in that fight, but this next one, I'm going to get you. I'm, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> so, so he was um, the truest samurai. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, so, I, 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 I rarely did my, the ghost stuff. I had to switch my place, not really switch my place. I was interested in the ghost stuff anyways. But like when I first started playing, I was trying to, you know, be a samurai and do the call outs because I thought that was really cool. But my call out system broke and I couldn't do that anymore. Uh, like I would literally activate it and I would just sit there and nothing would happen. So I'd have to like restart for my last save or whatever. Um, and I even like switched to the mode where it like is not a um, like button press. It's just a like release the button or whatever. It still would break. So I switched back. I'm like, well, I guess I'm just never going to fucking do standoffs. And so I became a monster. <laughs> I terrorized those Mongolians. They feared me because of all the fucking bullshit I put them through. I was the deem i wasn't a that wasn't a ghost i was a fucking devil like yeah. i was an oni like i was just ruthlessly murdering these people in the shadows and like when i got the poison like when i got the dark gun it just got even more fun for me there so <laughs> but yeah i i played that one like a a ninja not a samurai yeah he was playing <laughs> splinter so when i when i got the dark gun i didn't use it again until after i beaten the game like I used it on the missions that required it and then kind of just forgot about it. And I used then, it about uh, three times to see, see how effective it was. I went, cool. That's uh, not going to get used. Yeah, when <laughs> at that, uh, not going into a full spoiler, a spoiler cast here, but at that moment in the game where, uh, you use poison darts and you, and there are two separate points. Like the one where you have to use poison to progress the story and then one where you uh, behead somebody like both of those when you're getting chastised by your uncle i'm just like man as a player i totally agree with i totally agree with him, the uncle like <laughs> i mean i i appreciate jen and what he's doing here but i agree with the uncle i wish it was like older uh 
games from Sucker Punch where it gave you a decision for that point. And that would have like, been very nice. Yeah, because that's the uh, that's the infamous model, right? And I, I appreciate that they didn't use and just beat up the infamous model of um, good versus evil that they've done in their games before. And I know it's existed in countless other media. you got Fable and KOTOR and all the other things where you can choose your path of good and evil. But, uh, yeah, I wish there were a couple of things where they would have given you a choice as a player to make a move for Jin. But at the same time, man, the story in that game and the way it paces and the way it goes through and those final moments of the actual story of the game, <laughs> my boys came down and sat on the couch with me. And like just a couple minutes in, they're like, Dad, why are you crying? Why is that man so sad? And I'm like, guys, we just don't need to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was a, a, a several points in the game where I'm, I was just complaining in here. I'm like, why is it always fucking raining in my game? <laughs> it is literally raining nonstop, and I'm always having to pull – I've always had to pull out the whistle and, like, blow it to make it sunny again. And, like, a camp later, it's fucking pouring down raining lightning and storms. Well, we were really curious because, like, both, uh, like, JT and uh, Eric were saying, it, it rains, but not that much in their games. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why is it so rainy in my game? And uh, I think like, Eric was looking it up. And apparently there's like a hidden tracker for how much ghost stuff you do. Mm -hmm. And it affects the weather. And it affects the weather. So the more ghost stuff you do, the rainy it gets, the more rainy and stormy it gets. And I'm like, ah. That's, that why, why, that's, that's why it's perpetually yeah. tsunami that's weather. That's why it's always fucking raining in my game. Because yeah. I'm never not doing that. Yeah. And when you get that, uh, like, uh, fear power or like that ghost activation where you like fear them and you can like just blast through enemies yeah yeah i use that way too much see the best part is if you go into if you go into a camp right and you have your standoff leveled all the way up you go into the camp wearing the sack eye armor you're like, well, just to let you know in advance five of you guys aren't going to be here when i'm done <laughs> and then <laughs> You go through, and as soon as the sword goes through on that last guy, it's a cheap move, but it's it's it works in the game, so it works, period. As soon as the sword goes through that last dude, pause menu, switch down, change over to the ghost armor, and it's like, now I get to kill the rest of you in ghost mode faster because I don't have to kill as many people to get to it. So at that point, you're just like, I'm going to switch through you and you and you and you and you. <laughs> so uh, I actually got curious about that mechanic uh, one day. Um, so you can... You can do that before and after the standoff. Uh, I, I got into the habit of when I was just uh, like exploring the map, not actually like doing anything serious, I would generally use the traveler's outfit or the wanderer's outfit, whatever it was. Same. But I got curious if, uh, if I could start a standoff and before the standoff little cinematic thing happened, if I could pause the game and switch armors to the Sakai armor. You can. It works. Yep. I did it multiple <laughs> so you times. Can, you can switch to the Sakai armor for the standoff, then switch to the ghost armor for after the standoff. Did it multiple times. There was one thing got my goad, and that's the... Uh, I walked over every inch of that map in the Traveler's armor or the Traveler's attire to clear it because it clears a bigger radius, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you clear all the lighthouses and all the bases... It just clears the map anyway. So I'm like, well, great. I didn't have to walk over yeah. literally every square inch of this. I could have just cleared these out to start with. But uh, that's the fun part, though. I know. The game was, I never, ever felt bad about it. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, it sounds like I'm complaining, but at the same time, it's like it gave me the opportunity to see all the, the weird twists and hidden messages and notes and like, yeah. uh, like the, the rope hanging down the rock where the family tried to escape on a random cliffside. All those things that the game has to offer if you want to explore for it. And I wanted to explore for it so, so much. I loved it every minute of it. Um, dude, cutting through the Ronin in the second half of that game was like one of my favorite because <laughs> I loved the, the standoff sword fight mechanic for boss fights. I thought it was fantastic. I liked it so much. Yeah, I really liked the Ronin duels. Yeah, like uh, when you were when you would do the Ronin duels like across the map, that was great but even when they became uh even when they became like the regular enemy that you would see at a certain point in the game uh 
they fought so they fight so much different than the Mongolians, obviously, right? Yeah. It's like fighting a shadow of Jin himself as far as swordsmanship goes. And I'm like, this is great because it it's a awesome change of pace that I needed at just the right time. And now I'm like, I get to that point where I can slow down, analyze my opponent because they move a lot faster and they strike very hard. But yeah, uh, I, I would actually have trouble against some of the Ronin a lot of times because the AI would do this very clever thing where they wouldn't do anything. They would just stand there intimidatingly. Yep. <laughs> and I'm like, if I, if I eat so much as hit a button, I'm going to die. Yep. <laughs> and it is like you, uh, there, there were multiple times where it'd be like me versus four or five Ronin. And it would be that very silent pause between all of us. Like who's going to move first. <laughs> and then one of them moves and you go to parry it so that you can attack them from behind or whatever. And as soon as you parry, you effectively let your guard down. Yep. So not one or two, but the whole other four are going to attack you at the same time. Because that game does not put the brakes on how many people can be poking you with a pointy thing at one time. They yeah, are all, all trying to is, poke you with all the pointy things. Yep. All, all, the, all that really matters is whether or not you're hitting a button. Yes. One of those standoff situations are crazy. It's like you just... <laughs> You just throw down a smoke bomb and assassinate them all, and then you just keep on going. <laughs> never <laughs> so weird. I never used. I don't think I ever used a smoke bomb in the game if I didn't have to. I use I use the smoke bombs, and occasionally I would use the kunai. But I had a different problem. My, my game was always like super cloudy because I would use a mixture of of the play styles. But I had I had a problem where I would get super focused on the sword play. And I would forget I had ghost tools I could be using. <laughs> Same. <laughs> like, oh yeah, this would help me out here. This would help me out yeah. here. Like I'd, I'd get in a situation where I was way over my head and just get absolutely slaughtered. And like, while I'm waiting for the get for the loading screen to, to load back at my last checkpoint, I was like, you know, if I had been smarter about that and threw down a smoke bomb, I could have got through that fight. No problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of, cause we all got the platinum in it, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, Oddly enough, one of the trickiest trophies in the whole game for me to get was knock an enemy off a cliff. I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I tried. I did it on accident. Like, did you do it running and charge into somebody? No, um, spear stance and then do the kick move. That's what I tried to do. I kept trying to do that. I would lure people to a cliff. I'm like, come over here, buddy. And then I'd get on the other side of them and do the kick move. And it was like they would go and hit an invisible wall and fall down. Yeah, I had a couple of people do that to me too. Uh, like when I was like when I was aware of that being a trophy, I had that happen to me. Like they would they would hit where like the edge of the cliff would be and just kind of hit a wall and fall back down. Yep. And then I just ac did it by accident one time. I'm like, okay, well, cool. I guess I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> I got really really pissed off and ran and charged at somebody on a house actually, like on a building structure. And I ran up, charged him, hit him. And I forgot that was even a game mechanic. I think I just did that by accident. <laughs> and when I shoulder rushed him, he not only went off the house, but off a cliff behind it. That wasn't a huge cliff, just a small one, but it killed him. I'm like, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, the game itself, man, is, is, was fantastic. It was one of the best things that I've played in my life, but it was definitely something that i needed in 2020 yeah. the year where we were supposed to go to japan <laughs> yeah and we were granted we weren't japan. we weren't going to sashima but man i'm like maybe it's good the trip fell apart we could try to replan something nah, it's a long <laughs> way away from tokyo and osaka but still yeah, like at the very bottom of the yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's all right it's like but, you know one of the first islands uh, yep. off the coast <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, um, yeah, I I absolutely loved. It. I think the the scenery was great. The exploration was great. Um, what uh what other things caught y'all's attention in the uh, the wonderful year twenty twenty? It was a actually a decent amount of good games last year, like yep. Last of Us, Ghost, uh, Doom Eternal, uh, Neo Two. Horizons, <laughs> um, Animal Crossing, New Horizons. Um, Whoa! I really I forgot uh, that was last year. 
Did you forget that was last year? I feel like two hundred uh, years. Well, ago. that was the start of the pandemic, Justin. <laughs> I know everybody was stuck at home playing Animal Crossing. I know. My wife's a hairdresser. Her salon got shut down, so like they couldn't go into work. She got Animal Crossing. She got addicted to Animal Crossing. Next thing you know, she's got friends all over the country in different time zones, and she's like, <laughs> "I can't go to bed until four in the morning because so and so's got to come over and <laughs> or come over to my island and get this, this, and this, and I'm gonna go to theirs and get this." Like, Jesus, my wife was like involved in a black market of video games. <laughs> it was hilarious. The Animal Crossing black market. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she, she roughing people up for like <laughs> from 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 bells. Like, yeah, like, no, you, no, you're not paying hitting. it. You're not paying the protection. She's just going to come to the island and move shit around. I, I see. You she, she, said you got peaches, so <laughs> I'm coming to your island. You, if you're there or not, I don't care. <laughs> so originally we started on the same island until it became obnoxiously clear to me that I had to get her her own switch because <laughs> it was not working out. So. I logged in to my island as the guy who his entire life has loved Animal Crossing and who told his wife from the time they were married, you're going to love this type of game. Trust me. She's like, I don't really get in the games like that. I don't really get in the video games, period. And then it came out and then she started playing it. And next thing you know, like I log into, again, what I thought was my island and find that she has restructured half of it. (laughs) In a week, she got her full like her, her full editing prowess so where could she like terraform the island and everything and made a, a tree grove where she lined up apple trees and lined up peach trees and all of them like just row for row for row for row and each one had a watercolor paint sign in front of the row to say what the tree was just in case it wasn't bearing fruit at that particular time and she would bring people to the island to get the get the fruit or uh, whatever we had in our store or things that she had made, and they would trade their recipes back and forth for cataloging. <laughs> it was insane. Like it's at, I cannot tell you how awesome her her personal island is now that she has her own switch, <laughs> and how cool ours was when she was in control of it. When <laughs> she left, I just let it. I just let it go to shit. I actually haven't signed in since like October third, <laughs> so who knows what it looks like now? <laughs> I bet it's a just terrible, horrible, awful place at this point. Hey, There's probably man. nobody living there. Probably not. They're like, Justin, where did you go? You missed your birthday and Christmas and all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's also um like a dragon I lo- that game was fun as shit yeah i haven't played it yet is it really good uh-huh i like it it's a nice change of pace from <laughs> uh you know beat em up to a turn-based rpg and it's actually really fucking fun yeah while the shit um that's what i heard really, around. really love uh immortals uh phoenix rising is actually really freaking fun um it's it's Definitely like Zelda clone, but like it's still fun as shit. Yeah. And there's like, there's always like, if I play a game and I get frustrated and I keep playing it and like things keep frustrating me and I keep playing them. And at the very end, I'm like, that was still a fun ass game. Like, you know, that it was actually a really good game in my opinion, because if I don't like a game, I'll just straight up just not play it. Yeah. I'm just like, all right, well, I'm bored of this. I'm done. Straight up not having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if, like, it's a game, if I if I keep playing and keep playing and some things, m- like, mechanically or, like, story-wise frustrate me, and by the end of it, I'm just like, eh, it was an all right game. I didn't hate it. I didn't like it. But, like, if I'm, like, play it and I'm like, God damn it, what the fuck? <laughs> and then a few seconds later, I'm perfectly fine going, man, this game's so good. <laughs> and then the next minute, I'm like, what the fuck? This is so stupid. All right, cool. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, that's hilarious. And then, like, yeah, just keep doing that. Like, like I'll keep in that at the very end, games like that. I'm like, that was a fucking great game. Yeah, I like, love that. Ghost, like, I feel like most people, if they're that, like, one of the main mechanics broke for them and barely worked, they would probably stop playing it or like reinstall it and see if it would work again. But I was like, I don't need to show down people. <laughs> I could just be a fucking assassin and uh, kill everybody from the shadows. I'll just change the way that I play. This game's amazing. <laughs> or like, it's going to be controversial, guys, but like Cyberpunk. Um, <laughs> uh, when I, yeah, I played it on the PC and like every now and like I would have bugs and glitches sometimes, 
but like nothing never stopped me from going i never had a crash on the pc um which thank uh cd project red god for watching over me for not having my computer crash on me um and it was running like 4k and everything the whole time so my you know my computer was handling it just fine um but like sometimes i would have like dips and stuff and all it really took was like changing a few settings but you know i never lost really frame rates or um uh like resolution i was always in 4k and you know uh but like um like i would get these glitches and like weird bugs but nothing that would like break the game like sometimes they were hilarious like there was one time like i would just like not one time a bunch of times i keep like on the motorcycle i would like try to stop but instead i would just go underneath the car and then like i would wig out and i would get rocketed <laughs> out of the top of the car and i would just see the entire map and then fall to my death and laugh and reload from my <laughs> save point and go all right let's <laughs> let's not do that but that was fucking hilarious because <laughs> i would just <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking great um and like i really like the melee combat in that game um it's not like anything they're like i don't know it's fun yeah it's, it felt it's better special. than special yeah it's nothing special but in my opinion it's better it's than skyrim's melee way combat way better than skyrim um and like um for my street kid um they just use the katana all the time and uh i would like i had a really high cool f um but only for the cold uh, cold blood perks because at first i wasn't going to use it um because like the first few perks like if you don't put a lot into it 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 doesn't feel like it's useful but once you put a bunch of shit into cold blood I, I I was like showing um, Eric and JT. I'm like, yeah, they were like watching me play. Just like I guess we were talking, and I, I so happened to be playing at the time. And I was like, yeah, you want to see how fast I can get through combat? Um, I can kill everybody before they're alerted to me, like because I had a Savescan and something else that slowed down time. So it slowed down time. Like they would notice me, so time would slow down. I would kill that person. Time would still be slowed down. I would kill someone else kill someone else there would be people across the map that would start turning around and looking at me i would slow down time so with my uh Sebastian thing so they couldn't actually be alerted i would run over there because i'm at full speed because all of my cold blood stacks are up and i would just kill them and kill them and then see another person run over there and kill them and i'm like all right everybody's dead no one saw me and i like got stealth points for it and no one was alerted and i'm like see this is how i kill everybody when i'm playing this game <laughs> That's awesome. Like so, like I was gonna use the mantis blades on that character, but like I was like, that takes too much time. The katana is much faster. <laughs> <laughs> Just hacking and whacking and slashing people and the itty bitty bits is way fun, way more fun. Because like I was zooming, like yeah, like how I play Zane in Borderlands Three fast zoom, and I was just mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, like. That, that game's fun and i really like it uh mm -hmm. get bent anybody who doesn't like it. I, I was over here playing my corpo like i was playing fucking splinter cell or uh old school metal gear solid it's like oh i got spotted <laughs> reload the checkpoint <laughs> i like, uh, yeah, i'm not like an apologist or whatever but like the game was fun it wasn't broken for me and i get like hundreds of people or thousands of people I believe like millions of people had it broke. I don't know about millions, but thousands of thousands of people probably had it broken for them or like just unplayable. And like that sucks. And like I would have, I, you know, I wanted it to come out in 2020 only because, you know, well, Cyberpunk 2020, it'd be cool if it came out in 2020. But I would have waited for that game for another like yep. year and a half and been completely fine. Yep. Um, but like obviously it was a whole bunch of fuckery from like everybody um and like you know so but i still enjoyed the game and because i got lucky and it didn't break for me on my pc i just had some bugs that i had to deal with that i would get with any other game like like yeah just fix those bugs and i'm fine but that wasn't the same for everybody and i get it it needs to be on par for everybody but yeah it didn't kill the experience for me. Or like I was playing it on like a seven-year-old PS4 that would crash after like six hours of constant play. 
And the only reason why I haven't beaten the game so far is because eventually I got to the point where I was like, I don't want to risk bricking my PS4 on one of these crashes. So I think I'm just going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> but I loved every second I played. I, uh, so I had, I got it for, um, of course I got it for PS4, but I was playing it on the PS5. Um, and it performed really well. I, I will say that it performed very well. There were a lot of bugs and glitches that were obviously part of the the previous gen console launch uh, that looked fantastic and ran fantastic, but the glitch made no sense. Uh, there was one where uh, Jackie was just nowhere to be found. Like he would, he was on the map. Like go talk to Jackie, and he's just nowhere. Can't find him. Yep. Uh, there was one where I would go to get into V's car, and all of a sudden, would ca- the car would disappear. I was floating in a seated position with my hands on an imaginary steering wheel <laughs> in a vehicle that didn't exist and that I could not exit, and it was just froze. And then all of a sudden, an NPC vehicle would spawn about. 2,800 feet in the air directly over me and fall onto me and crush me. (laughs) That got annoying because that happened like four times where it didn't come from behind like a normal pedestrian vehicle would. It spawned in the atmosphere and just killed me and I had no control (laughs) over it. Uh, That sucked. I'm not lying. Um, So there were... (laughs) And I let my wife make a character, and uh, she made a female character. She worked very hard on on the appearance of it. She was very proud, and she should have been because it looked better than the person that I made. Uh, then when the game launched, a rather hilarious glitch happened where it didn't respect her shirts, and her boobs would glitch out of every shirt that she wore. And it was hilarious because it was like, it fits her body, but it looks like the chest is cut out to just let her tits breathe. <laughs> and it was, it was cyberpunk, cyberpunk baby. <laughs> cyberpunk yeah. baby. Yeah. So the, it got to the point for me where I was running into not necessarily what I would call game breaking glitches, except for the Jackie thing. If I was in a mission where I had to go talk to Jackie and he just didn't exist. He was shown on the mini map for where he was supposed to be. And, and this is as early as the Ripper knock, like when you meet him at the like yeah. so um you just couldn't progress past it. Uh, you guys know I've got I've got kids, so those particular types of game. Cyberpunk, especially, is something I have to wait until they went to bed for me to play it and there were multiple nights where i'm like all right guys it's time for bed and julian's like it's only like 8 15 but i'm like no i've set the clocks for it it's 9 30 so like <laughs> they would go and i'd sit down to play and then i would run into things that wouldn't allow me to progress any further and that is the reason why i took the refund i'm the guy so uh i got the refund on it when it comes out when it's not buggy I'll probably go back and buy it. I have no problem doing that and eventually making the time to sit down and play it. Like when the actual PlayStation 5 version comes out? Yeah, when the actual PS5 version comes out. Um, because I would like I would like to experience it, although the play styles and the character builds and everything didn't jive with me in the time that I had it. That could just be because it was still super early game. Like I know a lot of people said that it was like 12 hours before they got kicked into the like out of the intro sequence or whatever. So uh, I think that I will go back to it. I just, uh, I'll wait for it to be completed and for me to be able to make the time. Yeah. I, I, I got to be honest. Even if my game had been completely unplayable, I wouldn't have taken the refund. And that's only because I knew buying the game, I was going to get an unfinished buggy mess. I was completely prepared to not be able to play that game until I bought a PS5. And I haven't been able to buy a PS5 yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I guess I'm just really thankful that, you know, my, my PC held up and played it. Like, you know, I had a few, like, bugs. I never had anything game-breaking, and I never had it crash on me. Um, so, but, you know, I like I said, I, I guess I'm... I'm lucky for yeah. that. 
Um, the universe gave you something because usually it steals from you in every game. Yeah, for, that's for true. once. For <laughs> once. Yeah, and let me play. Like, obviously, there were bugs and stuff, but like, it didn't completely break my game. Yeah. Like, for once, you could play everything that game offered <laughs> yeah. to you. That was your that was your mean Joe Green jersey moment right there, where the universe is just like, hey, kid, catch. <laughs> like, he couldn't wow, use the standoffs thanks. and ghosts, so we'll let him play Cyberpunk pretty much bug free. He's been wanting to play this game forever. And every game that I played, that that last year had a bug in it and like something broke like last of us i was sending you guys in the discord like messages and like videos of me and my care like ellie like (laughs) (laughs) guys look i used the bow backwards (laughs) all right (laughs) or like um isn't there supposed to be a hand when i'm holding this book and looking at this object (laughs) you're like no there aren't any hands i'm like hmm there are though <laughs> everything else has man. at some at some points it's like when you go to inspect an object it just like floats and you can rotate it like uh there's like points but well, no no the, the, there's supposed to be a hand even when you're rotating it like that no like, that's what, there are two different views there's a view with your hand where you rotate things and there's one without a hand and that's what i thought you were but the thing is you can tell because when she's holding something in her hand uh it's like molded to fit her hand. Yeah. And when it's something that's just like free floating, you can tell that it's just like a, like a pre-gen image that's floating there and you can spin it or turn it to investigate things. But uh, that's what I was saying. Like, are you sure it's not this moment? But like, no, it's, it's the actual, my hand should be here. And it's not. <laughs> yeah. So. Cause then I was like, I reloaded. I'm like, see, there's a, my book the books in my hand. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't or, know, man. God. <laughs> yeah. Last of us two was pretty, Pretty uh, pretty Bug- good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was buggy as shit for me. And like, <laughs> last was, it was very good. It was good though, but like, that was another good game last year. Um, but like, yeah, most everything. Like, I had like, like um, like a dragon broke on me. I've had like a mortal break on me, but not nothing in the way that I'm like, ah, oh, fuck this game. That's just like, would like crash a bunch or something would happen. I'm like, I don't think that's supposed to happen. <laughs> Oh, have you, uh, have you broken Hades? <laughs> Do what? Have you broken Hades? No, I didn't break Hades. I forgot. That game also came out last year, and that's a fucking fantastic game. It is a wonderful game. We played it for, for our stream. I loved it. I came home and bought it. For, and, for having uh, only played it for maybe eight hours, it is a very good game. Yeah, Hades? shout out to the next video. It's going to be uh, <laughs> the second part of Hades. So Who's playing? As me? Uh, the rest of you. Oh, all of us together? Yeah, you, Eric, and uh, Cameron. How, Since uh, I had the longest run, uh, my whole first video was half of the, the content. So, so you beat Meg. I can't remember. You didn't get to the Hydra, did you? Yeah, I got to the Hydra. You did? I fell on the Hydra. Yeah, that's right. I got like 75% of its health and died. Have you gotten a clear yet? No, I haven't beat the whole thing, no. The farthest I've made it is Elysium. Same I haven't here. been back in a while. I met death and Elysium. I got past death and uh, it was like the first or the second sub boss fight in Elysium. That's the furthest I've made it so far. Uh, I got super into it for like a, a serious week where a week and a half where every day I was like, I'm gonna play a little bit more. I'm figuring out more. I'm gonna play a little <laughs> more. I'm figuring out more. But hey, yeah, I, I think, I think like when I bought it, there were like another game that I was playing too. So I was like, this is I'm a little more focused on this one. I'm also say Assassin's Creed Syndicate was a great game that came out. Last uh, year. I got some bad news for you, buddy. Oh yeah, I, I, there was a time where I was forced at gunpoint to play. Quite literally, I, was, I wasn't forced at gunpoint. I, mm. not, no, I remember Tony encouraged. standing <laughs> over you. You're right. Tony had a gun to my head, and he's like, "If you don't play this fucking game, I'm going to end your life." But no, he, he, we had been talking for the longest time, like how I really wanted to play Syndicate when it came out, but I was just done with um, Assassin's Creed at that point. Um, and I didn't come back until Odyssey. Um, and he you know, he was like, it's probably my favorite out of all of them is Syndicate. And I'm like, that's really high praise coming from you since he's like the Assassin's Creed guy. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'll try it. Sure, I could do that. And he's like, all right, here's my Xbox One and <laughs> here's Syndicate, play it. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to do this now. <laughs> and so I just stopped playing whatever I was playing um, and played um, Syndicate, and I had a great time. 
Um, I had a few bugs, but you know, it's an Ubisoft game. That's yeah, there's a lot. It's of me. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, it bounds of bugs to happen, oh, but course. nothing that was like terrible, like like Unity, like my first few seconds in the Unity, I jump and get stuck in the air, kind of <laughs> like game breaking bullshit. Um, but yeah, like I I got to play Syndicate last year, and it was actually really fun. I really liked the 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 dynamic of playing the two characters because you know one's more like melee based combat and the other one's more of your assassin mm -hmm. um so it was fun to like switch between like normally i played as um <clears throat> evie the most she's the the assassin is, one yeah. um for like most of like the running around stuff um but i really did like playing as um oh my god i can't remember the guy's name now <laughs> um you say trevor trevor sure trevor um oh, i really like playing as him too because like some of his like beat down stuff's fun uh but yeah that was another <clears> great <throat> game that i got to play last year that didn't actually come out last year yeah uh, syndicate was good uh uh going back to hades I'd, I'd be lying if i said i didn't only buy that game because of the developer <laughs> super giants or, super, I, super giants fantastic, yeah, super yeah. Giants, fantastic. Uh, and i i do that i do that actually quite a bit sometimes i I very much uh, believe in the only thing that matters as far as a consumer goes is if they're willing to spend their money on it or not. Reviews don't matter. People's opinions don't matter. It only matters if you spent money on it or not. Um, so there are a lot of times where I'll go, I'm probably going to play this game max five to 10 hours, even though it's a 30 hour game. I'm only doing it so that they get my money. That's literally the only reason. So like the, the funny part about that, because I, everything about, Everything about Hades says good. God transistor was good. <laughs> What's up? Transistor. Oh, is yeah. So good. A everything about game. Hades says this is not a Justin game. Everything about <laughs> it. Like literally everything. Like, oh, it's procedurally generated. Nope. I don't care. I don't want it. Like, oh, so it's it's <laughs> supposed to be very difficult. I don't want it. Your play style is not consistent because you have to change abilities. I don't want that. And then I get into it, and I'm like, I don't want to put this down. Like, I don't want to stop <laughs> playing this. It's fucking fantastic. Like, like, I did this this time, and it worked out really well, but I'm not getting this same opportunity. I've got to go this route with it. So thinking on the fly and coming, like, it. But at the same time, you get to a point, uh, and I, I told Josh, I know I was talking to you about it before, like, I'm just playing as Captain America. Like, I've <laughs> unlocked all the weapons uh, that will... I've got the I've got like the gun thing. I hate the gun thing. I don't really like it. But I've got that's how, all uh, that's how you played for the first time in uh, our video. In the, yeah, in the video of the shield. <laughs> yep. And I thought it like I tried out everything, and um, I like the I like the spear and I like the shield, but the shield the best for me, especially uh, especially when you <laughs> upgrade it and you can just throw it and it just floats around on its own while you can still use it. So you'll still have a shield that you can that you can smash things with and block and all that but at the same time you've got one just like satellite floating around chopping people into bits i like that a lot um you know hades pole arm so i really like the spear <laughs> yeah. hey yeah for your for, reach across the map arms i uh i like i like that game a lot it's really really fun it's it is a very good the, game yeah it's it, it's it it would have deserved game of the year last year the art style the direction the the, the characters in that game are just remarkably well done yeah, the uh, artwork for all the characters is so beautiful. Yeah. God. The the voice acting for it, just like the snark they give uh, <laughs> everybody is... The music's great. Yeah, so Hades good. is fucking fantastic. Yeah. And how happy I get every time I talk to Dusa is it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> She's so like cute. She's like, I'd, oh my goodness, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> She's so giggly. <laughs> so it's yeah. great. So uh, I actually, uh, actually uh, um, found out a fun fact about uh, the voice acting specifically for uh, Zagreus in, in Hades. Um, you know how super giant games always have really good music? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a composer for they use for all of their music and all the games. It's always the same composer. He voices Zagreus. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> so really so cool. not only not only is he responsible for the music in Hades, he's responsible for Zagreus's personality. Yeah, that's really cool. And all that's the really cool. Hades is very, very like his father is very, very well done. Uh, every pretty much everybody in that game is just like spot on as far as uh as far as voice acting goes. 
Um, while we're talking about games that came out in the later half of last year, and while we're talking about bugs, Bug Snacks is one of the best games I've played in a long in time. Man. What? <laughs> Just the way that it, it felt like a segue to like today's sponsor, uh, Insect Repellent. Uh, get your some today with our coupon code. <laughs> I could have oh, sworn that today's sponsor was Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Just Raid yeah. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Started from the bottom. Now we're at Raid Shadow Legends. We'll get more on <laughs> that later. Uh, we got <laughs> more on that. <laughs> or, is it, or is it McAllister's? <laughs> <We're-> <laughs> For McAllister's? McCall- yeah. yeah, all right, sandwiches and tea. Yeah. Hey. The tea's really good. Sam's is all right. Spuds are pretty okay. Uh, <laughs> and that's the plug. Um, so give us money, McAllister. Not sponsored. <laughs> not sponsored. Bug Snacks was great. If you guys haven't played it yet, uh, <laughs> no, we don't have PlayStation Five. Yeah, it's on PS4. we don't have PlayStation Fives. It's on PS4. Why would I? Why buy would it I buy PC? it? It was free on PlayStation Five. Why would I buy it yeah, on the no. PlayStation Four? I'm gonna I'm gonna be fair with you, bud. You're not really uh you're not really churning all the gears the PS5 to make this one work at, at peak <laughs> performance. It's I'm just I'm just saying I'm it's just a, saying it's a PS5 title and it was free on the PS5. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy it on the PlayStation no. 4. <laughs> it's really, really good. It's really good. Uh the store the story is adorable. It's like Pokemon Snap, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yep. But so you got to go around and catch these things for people. They all want different ones. And then eventually you realize that all these people are just harsh, self abusive addicts living on an island. It's very <laughs> interesting. Uh, but the game is a lot of fun. Also, Astro's Playroom, which, you know, comes with the PS5 console. One of the best platformers I've played in years. It's, stupid well done for what I thought was just a demo because it's got four different worlds or five different worlds for you to explore. It's got time trial races. Each world has uh, like four legs of the map and additional things to find. It's a huge love letter to PlayStation, the uh, things that are hidden in it and everything else. I loved it. So I, I platinum Astro's Playroom, platinum Bug Snacks. And Platin, uh, Ghost of Tsushima at the end of the year. I started playing, um, I started playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and have not gotten that far into it. I just can't, I can't get glued to that game because if it was just a straight up Viking game, it'd be perfect. The thing that ruins it for me is that it makes itself an Assassin's Creed game in uncomfortable and unnatural ways, the same way Origins did. That's the problem with most Assassin's Creed games. They make very good period games and then throw a bunch of useless game mechanics on top of it that ruin it. I have said this so many times. They just need to drop that banner of Assassin's Creed. And just start making some historical fantasy games. Exactly. Like, uh, uh, (laughs) um, Immortal. Yep. Uh, Phoenix Rising. It's basically like it feels like Odyssey, but not a big as map, and it's got all of the same like Greek culture and stuff, but with a little added humor and stuff. And I, I, I kind of really dig that because I really like you know uh, ancient Greece, yeah, like mythology and stuff. And they don't shy away from like the horrible things that like they like you know make it like a joke because it's Prometheus telling Zeus a story. Um, and there was one scene that's just hilarious. Um, they're talking about how like Aphrodite, uh, became around and, um, you know, he's like trying to tell, uh, Zeus and Zeus is just not quite getting it. So he's like, so it, it seemed like they like took the actor away from the mic and was like, with like how they did it was like having him whisper like, and then he's because, uh, uh, Kronos is. So, 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 fell into the ocean and so, 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 then just you know cutting out the like because it's rated T's and cutting yeah. out like the graphic stuff and Zeus is like you're the worst Prometheus never talk to me again <laughs> and he's like oh my god that's great <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying like they make Ubisoft has the capacity to make such fantastic games but they weigh themselves down under a reputation that they think they have <laughs> and it's like yeah, nobody cares about the assassins anymore, man. Just let that shit die and give us 
come up with a new banner, like a new franchise of like history something. You know what I mean? Like that, that's what I was saying they could do with Immortal. Like Phoenix's story is about ancient Greece. Mm-hmm. Then they could just keep the Immortal banner, like Immortal whatever's the new story, like Immortal this new story, Immortal this new story, and they could just keep telling story stories. I like, like that. I like the idea of that for like the the adorable thing not really want to call it adorable but you know like the more uh the more light and colorful games if they're going to make more things like that i i like that idea my idea is let them break off abstergo and let abstergo be a production studio for ubisoft where you know any game that abstergo puts out is going to be a period piece game but no more Assassin's Creed, right? Just upstairs goes this, upstairs goes that. Like uh, Feudal Japan. They don't need to do that. Don't fuck with it because it's already been done and it was done very good. Very I'd be okay well. if they still keep it in the Assassin's Creed universe and just cut out all the Assassin stuff. I, I mean, if they want to do that, but I mean, the, the, ter- the term Assassin's Creed is poison for me now. Like it's, <laughs> and I feel like it's poison for a lot of people. And... I think that's why getting rid of it might be a good idea because they've proven they can make these good things. And if they come to an E3, if those ever happen again, or a Ubisoft forward or whatever, once upon a time, son, (laughs) we got G4 coming back, man. Anything's possible. Uh, (laughs) But if, if they put out a a, a notice that said we're spinning off Abstergo and they're going to make games that tell you a piece of history. And they're all those timeline period pieces. I think that would rally for them really well as far as things they could produce and things that people would want to play. Because if they made a real game about the American Revolution or a real game about, you know, anything. like Yeah, any point in history I'd like to play a game of. Yeah. It's, well, it'd be significant real, point in history right where you can you're actually tuned into a person of either minor or major relevance fictional character is fine for that point in time like that's really cool and maybe abstergo could take that same bit and be like all right we're gonna make another pirate game where you're a pirate and there's no assassinating in it you're just a pirate you're just a pirate and Skull and Bones is canceled. We made a terrible mistake. I'm sorry we wasted that money and your time. <laughs> but here's what you really wanted. So, like, I don't know. I, I hope that that studio starts doing things like that. But we're going to keep keep getting Assassin's Creed games because people keep buying Assassin's Creed games. Yeah. And they keep buying them for that premise. Like, hey, this is a Tony different fault. point in history. <laughs> but, no. Just throw Tony under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> keep buying them. He bought a Russian copy of Syndicate so he could get the special edition thing for it. <laughs> the man has his interests. He is a good dude. Let him be. He is He is a good dude, but he's the reason we keep getting Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> Tony hey, specifically. Uh, Tony I know, Odyssey was pretty fun. It was way too big, but it was still fun. Tony, do us a favor. Whenever you listen to this, call your friends at Ubisoft and tell them my <laughs> idea about spinning off of Stergo. I don't want any money. <laughs> I just want good period piece video games. I mean, he's in that he he he's in a total agreement with that like period piece thing too. That doesn't have to necessarily be time tied with Assassin's Creed. Like you can have everything can be separate. You can have your Assassin's Creed be more Assassin's Creed. Then you can take your more period piece games, and then you could keep doing like the mortal stuff, so it can be a little more cutesy or you could know you, Breath of the Wild esque like you art just style. Imagine Abstergo making a game about World War II that wasn't Assassin's Creed based. Or a World War II one. game that's not necessarily a shooter would be exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, if if Abstergo did that, that would essentially be like a siphon filter in World War II. Which now the that I've heard person, myself say like, it, I want that adventure. shit really, really bad. Like, World War II game would be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, like a like a stealth. There's um thing. Um, in Syndicate. <laughs> uh, there's uh like these uh missions where you play in like the future. Um, but it, you're playing not too far in the future. You're playing in World War One, and like when I first encountered it, I was like, "Whoa, this is fucking nuts! This is cool!" And I was like uh, talking, um, and I was like 
they should have done that like something like that's a little more modern but in that weird position where like things are still old but yep. new as it's like a perfect place like for something like that like so like you could like you know see an assassin getting around during world war one doing that stuff like you know espionage has been a thing in war yeah. forever um but i was like playing it and like it was during the the parts that i was playing was like during the siege of um um britain um in world war one and uh so like i'm climbing on one of the big bridges while like these old planes and like zeppelins are flying around like attacking the city and i'm like this is neat and i met like young Ch uh winston churchill and stuff like that i'm like this is like this is cool like now i just want a whole game that's like this but not necessarily with all the assassin creed stuff it's like that every time you pick up an assassin's creed game man i want this but with less assassin's creed parts of it but like it, it really that one was more of an assassin's creed e game like i don't think odyssey really feels like an assassin's creed game at at all really because mm. like yeah you can assassinate people but you don't have an assassin's blade like you can stealth kill people i don't really call it like that's just assassinating that's a stealth kill like there aren't like the same like there was even like the you know taking the feather or taking like the cloth with the blood and taking it and like talking to your victim that's nowhere in odyssey like and that's what i want more so and valhalla is just that then that's cool with me like it like they definitely got away from the Assassin's Creed stuff um, compared to what it used to be, which I like. There's not like a focus on you have to do this or else like an Odyssey. I'm like barely through the main game and I've done a fuck ton of shit in that game without having to do the main storyline because it's not holding me back. Like in other ones where it's like, well, yeah, you can do all this cool side stuff, but if you want all these cool Assassin's Creed tools, you have to, if you want all these cool assassination stuff, or if you want a, more of these items, you've got to further along in the story. Or like if you want to get to this part in the map or whatever. Um, uh, well, in Odyssey, it's the prologue, and as soon as you're done with the prologue, the whole map's open to you. You can go anywhere else in that map you want to. And so that's what it's just that's level locked. You can, you can go there, but you're going to get your ass kicked. Yeah. Origins origins opens up but not like that like origins gives you a hard block like man eh, you don't need to do that yet so it'll just like fade out and then eventually it opens up after you hit those certain story beats uh but i thought but, origins was fantastic i loved playing in ancient egypt i thought that was great again if you would take out the assassins aspect <laughs> and just play a magi in egypt that would be fantastic uh <clears throat> i feel like they're doing like they're kind of trying to get away from that like as much because like i said odyssey barely feels like an assassin's creed game like there's hardly like from like i think you may get like an out of like animus experience um to like do some story like fucking once in a blue moon like i i think i remember only two really off the top of my head and I did so much more shit than that. Like, um, but like, so if Valhalla is anything like that, then I'm going to keep like, just keep slowly turn, like taking out. Cause if you go back in time where before the assassins are completely founded, then that's like the perfect place to do that. So um, Valhalla, excuse me, <clears throat> Valhalla, uh, like I said, is a fantastic game that's weighted and buried under the idea that it's an Assassin's Creed game. So when you meet Ivor, I'm all for him or her, whichever model you choose to play, because it's the same character name, just you know, gender gender's up to you, or you let the game decide. Uh, it's it's great. the The character is cool. The pacing is cool. Um, it plays through really well. And then when you get to, you know, past that initial intro part of the game that all of them have, the map is restricted because it wants you to go certain places to expand the story a little bit more until eventually you can open up and go wherever. But that trek is longer than it needs to be. Like it's a few hours longer than it needs to be from inception of the game to where you have a truly open world 
And in that time, it makes very damn sure that you are very damn sure it's an Assassin's Creed game. And that's the kind of thing I wish it would cut back on a little bit. Now, with it being an Assassin's Creed game, as soon as I gained any sort of independence, I'm just like, I'm going to look at my map and, ooh, look, there's a bird on the map. So I'm going to go find that point and clear up this area. And the thing about doing that in Norway is uh, it's all just, you know, ice and mountains it's not open roads or paths or and you're traveling by boat so that's fun it's like i'm gonna (laughs) i'm gonna sail over to this shore and climb up this mountain face and he does like your character ivor he or she will climb bold face rock or bold face snow like he's just climbing up a building in any one of the other games there's no there's no like shame or impact there tiny little nook he's grab it and go up so uh yeah it's it's kind of funny because it's i uh referred to it as viking breath of the wild to my wife on multiple occasions while she would seem to play it and it's pretty accurate um i i hope for more from ubisoft and i hope they come up with some good ideas for how they can change things in the future But with the future in mind, and it now being February 2021, not too fast, uh, what are you guys thinking for 2021? Are there any games you're excited about? Do you know what's coming out at all? Not really. Yeah, I don't don't really have anything. Like, I guess Monster... Straight up, not like the only thing that I know that, like, the couple things I know are Strikers. Yep. And that's because that comes out this month and the Mass Effect uh, trilogy uh, remaster and everything else is on a wait basis. Like, I don't even want to know what's coming out this year because I don't know if I'm I, like, you know, that's I don't bad. have a PlayStation 5, so I can't get excited about anything. Yeah. Well, I so, can, guys, and I'm here to tell you what's coming out this year. <laughs> well, I don't care. <laughs> Deathloop. But don't have out. a PlayStation Five. Literally, that's one of the reasons why I don't really care about like games coming out. Like, it's because I don't have a play. I don't have a new console. Yeah, I'm. I'm so pretty much the to thing, the point. The con- the games that are coming out on that console, I don't care about. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much to the point. Unless it's coming out on my Switch, I don't care about it because I'm not buying it until I have a PS Five. Like legit, that's 100 percent true. And I don't know when I'm going to be able to buy a PS- PS5 because anytime they go on sale, they're immediately bought. And yeah. I saw them go up at, um, they went up on Target today and then, or was it Series X went up on Target? One of them. But yeah, it's like, it's ridiculous how in tune you have to be with social media and everything else to see where these things are flying up for you I to generally don't hear get about on it. Get, yeah. I generally don't hear about it until eight hours after it would have mattered. So I, um, like I said, when I got my PS5, I lost a lot of sleep. I, fo- I followed no sponsor, no connection whatsoever, Wario64 on Twitter. And uh, I happened to be at my desk working in my office, like I always am. And I had the PlayStation site open. And I was just alt f 5 every time I finished typing a sentence for work. I would move over to my other keyboard, just like alt f 5 or just F5, F5. And then eventually it dumped me into a line. And over the course of an hour, I went from, we don't know how long your wait is to, hey, it's your turn. And I got in, had all my information saved on the PlayStation website and on the Sony website, went in, put it in cart, hit by, hit by now, good, we're done. And I got the confirmation email like an hour and a half, two hours later and but it was days that I was at it trying. It wasn't just by random luck. It was just days that I was putting in the trying to get one. I think that's and, the other reason why I'm like, I don't really care because I'm not trying to like sit here and because I, I follow, I've followed Wario for like two years now. And I, like, I don't always see his tweets, yeah. but that's because I'm not always on social media. Like, you know, I got other shit to do. Um, I'm not always looking at Twitter or Facebook and like, I like almost to the point where I legit just hate Facebook yep. and it, it sucks. Cause there's a lot of friends that I know that use it and I'm like, but I don't want to use it, but that's like the only way I can communicate with you. How about 
you don't use Facebook. <laughs> I like the messenger. The messenger is nice. Yeah, messenger's great. Yeah, we talk um, on messenger pretty much every day. Like uh, just like everybody go to Discord. I, I look at that way more than I do like anything else. So yeah, um, if it you know a Discord is active, but like I'll check that way more than I will like a regular social media. Um, except for like you know YouTube, but you know that's because we're on YouTube. So I go yeah. and check our stats and shit like that. Um. And just I I like YouTube as a platform, um, but like I'm not trying to like force myself to sit here and go. All right, is there one? All right, Oreo text tweeted like two minutes ago. All right, am I gonna? I'm not trying to do that. It's I'm way just too gonna much. wait for Sony to be like, all right, we're like launching a fuck ton of product, and I'm like, all right, when I know that I'm could get one in the store or I could get one off your website, fuck, then now I'm gonna get one which might not be until this holiday season. So yep. I'm like actively not trying to get excited about games coming out this year, unless it's something that I specifically want to buy on my PC or it's on the switch. Like Eric said, right. because. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. I absolutely get it. It's uh I think it's also one of the reasons why I didn't get as excited for Cyberpunk as I could have because, like, man, I'd really love to play this on my PC, but there's no fucking way my PC is going to run that. <laughs> uh, but, and there are things that, especially Xbox titles, that whenever those come out, I would love to play, but I don't have a Series X. I would love to play them on PC. The Medium, I think that's Series X only, though. I don't think that's on No, PC. it's on the PC. I actually have it, it downloaded. Oh, do you? Is it good? Mm. I haven't tried it yet. It came out yesterday, I think, but yeah. I have it downloaded. I just haven't played it yet. I want to I want to try that one out. Uh, there are a couple of titles coming out for Series X specifically that I want to see, that I want to play, uh, or PC, either one. But, I mean, same same way you're going about the PS5, like, all right, I'll just get to them when I get to them. Like, so, uh, the, with the PS5, I... I'm looking forward to Deathloop. I wouldn't say I'm super excited about it, but like the God of War sequel and other things, the Ratchet Clank, whatever, supposed to come out within the year. Those games I'm looking forward to. Um, and also some minor stuff along the way. The Actually, today, the PS5 version of God of War 2018 <laughs> is released. So uh, they made the upgrades to that for, for that model. So I'm probably going to go back and play that again. Um, <laughs> they're working on the one for Ghost of Tsushima, and it should be out soon. Um, don't know if I'd go back and play. Th probably not immediately, but I will go back and play <laughs> that again at some point, just because that game was so good. I have no problem just riding around aimlessly in it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's 2021 is going to be a weird, get, weird year for gaming. Uh, console split years are always weird to begin with. Because new generations come out at the holiday, and then for the next 12 to 24 months, it's a crapshoot on is this coming to the next gen only or is it coming to current gen? Um, so it's, it's with that happening at the tail end, or well, really in the middle of a pandemic, it's going to be interesting to see what actually comes out this year or if it's going to be like going to the movies in 2020 where you didn't go to the movies and nothing came out. Yeah. And if you just happen upon a red box now, the available movies are from 2019 and early <laughs> 2020 and they just haven't been shuffled through because nothing's coming out. Yeah, Everything's like on digital. Another reason why I'm like not 100% excited to like maybe I'll get a little more excited about games coming out like towards like the summer when they do bigger announcements and like people are putting out like more like, Hey, these are a bunch of games that are coming out. Like I might start getting excited about those, but for most part, they're probably going to be 2022 releases mm -hmm. um, and not 2021. I feel like that's this year just feels like a weird hole. Like this is a strange year in between 2020 and then like 2022. This is literally just a weird stepping stone that hopefully just goes by and we're into 2022 and it's, it's Things weird. are a little different. Hopefully. It's weird that hasn't been approached yet when you think about it because developers, production studios, console developers as well have had nothing but time. Nintendo has had nothing but availability to put out an actual direct. Sony has had nothing but availability to put out an actual PlayStation whatever the fuck they call those things. I can't remember now. <laughs> uh, 
state of play the state of play yeah thank you it's it's weird that they haven't made those announcements yet and that they haven't done things like that especially with it coming into february now we could uh, we could expect nintendo to say something because march is coming up close and they have march 31st as a doomsday for several games so you would think they have to put some sort of notification out. They got to put some sort of wording out there. And you would think Sony would want to jump up and say, "Hey, these are the games we have coming out year for our or coming out this year for our new console." You would think Microsoft would want to get up and say, "These are the things that you will play this year on your Series X or on your PC." I think uh, I think just world circumstance may have skewed the timelines quite a bit. It probably has. So, uh, no, nobody's saying anything because nobody wants to set anything in stone on accident. They it, don't really it, it know probably what has. Happen. But at the same time, a lot of these studios have thankfully and successfully been able to go home and work safely from home uh, where they just pack up their rigs and go. Now, yep. is it the same as working in an office? No, because your immediate, immediate team isn't around you. But you have Microsoft Teams, you have Slack, you have all these integrated office softwares that allow you to work with somebody in another city and state just as if they're sitting right next to you in a room. I do it with my career already. I did it before the pandemic hit, but now all of my peers and coworkers are doing it as well. It used to be everybody in an office and I was just a remote guy and now everybody's at home. And I was like, oh yeah, we bring your, your office equipment home and it works. I'm like, yeah, it does. But then you got to account for how many power outages are going up because people are using additional power. How many internet outages are occurring because people are burning through bandwidth. And that's happening a lot. We get a lot of reports of it. So, like, there, there are definitely things that could hinder those timelines, but product- productivity is still there. So, the ultimate question is, if things aren't going according to the original plan... When is that messaging going to come out? When is that wording going to come out? And just like Josh said, that's something that we're going to probably hear more about closer to the summer, even yeah. though we have this giant pillowy, comfortable time where it's it's open and available for them to put out messaging now. It was at the end of last year, but there was a new console out, the holidays, yada, yeah. yada. I, I think, I honestly think what it is, if they said anything now, they wouldn't, have any kind of statement about if not now when yeah all they would be able to say is please wait and that never that never goes well with anybody for for playstation and microsoft i'm 100 percent with that for nintendo that's why i'm a little but then again it's nintendo they do their own thing they'll come out in february and be like Hey, we know E3 is coming up, but we're going to tell you about this bombshell and this bombshell and this <laughs> bombshell. And then E3 rolls around, and you're like, "All right, we're going to hear about Metroid." You never hear about Metroid. Like, All right, we're going to finally get Mother Three. You never get Mother Three. <laughs> it's like you, they string people along like that, but they give them those not quarterly, but every so often they'll give them those big updates. So um, it'll be interesting to see what we get and when this year, but. It's really just a matter of waiting for right now. Until then, I will enjoy my PS5 and this lovely, lovely, absolute improvement of a controller. I didn't think <laughs> Is it the, the best controller Shock you've 4? ever used. I don't think the DualShock 4 could have gotten better until they did this. This is <laughs> fucking amazing. I can't say these triggers are unbelievable. Everything Before, about it like, feels great. Like huh? wrap up. And since you were talking about controllers, I just want to have to like. Uh, retract um, my uh, an old statement how I said like uh, the 360 controller is my favorite controller I recently put my hands on one like some point ago and I was like uh nope (laughs) that's weird I'm good the Xbox One controller is a whole lot better uh, yeah, like I, I was, I can't remember where I was or what I was doing, but I like put my hand on it. I'm like, why are the shoulders so high? Like, well, I was like, I feel like I remember this thing being bigger than this. Why is this smaller than it, than I used yeah. to think it was? And I'm like, 
holy shit, I got used to the Xbox One controller. The Xbox One controller is much better than the 360. Yep. It's still not my favorite controller. I really like the DualSense, um, the DualShock 4. Um, and I still really like my pro, my pro controller uh, for like the Switch. It's, it's really nice. It's like a better 360 controller, but um, but See, this is better. You're 100 percent right. I loved this forever. This yeah, so did I. I like, but I like I said, it, it it just it just took it just took me putting one back in my hands and going, what the fuck? This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the the handle flares are way too far out there. There are way too many curves to it, and the shoulder buttons are too high. Like, yeah, so I now have to like put that down as not one of my favorite controllers anymore. Yeah. Like, it just took, you know, holding it again. Going, I feel like this would be hard to use again. <laughs> the the PS5 controller edges out the GameCube controller, and of course the PS4 controller. <laughs> um, I like it a lot better than the Xbox. Controller. Like, I like the Xbox Series Series X and the Xbox One controller. But the PS5 controller is just fantastic. Everything about it feels good. Um, the weight feels good. Uh, one, one thing that was an adjustment at first, I'll be 100% honest, honest about, is the vibration and everything in the handles in the, you know, of the controller. Because sometimes it just made my, my hand feel heavy. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, it's going to be a good year. There's a lot to look forward to. <laughs> and with that being said, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the idea of us being able to do this again. Like I said, we're still working on a schedule, but we will keep these rolling out in some form of cadence. And uh, nah. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. Don't don't hold us to it. I do like the idea of doing these live though. Hopefully yeah, it's kind we can, of fun. Hopefully we like, can gain some traction on this. There's less room for us to fuck up though. <laughs> There's plenty of room for us to fuck up, and we will be sure to do it. Catch I'm, us for a sausage tray and find out. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying it yeah. normally takes us like 20 minutes to start a podcast. Yeah, gonna have to. So that being said, I have a little person walking into the room to <laughs> join us. <laughs> she, she couldn't resist. She had to make it. <laughs> All right. Uh... With that being said, heart out. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Justin with Roommates Gaming. You just watch the thing. So like the thing and share the thing. Say some things and subscribe to things. Watch this thing or watch that thing. I'm going to go do other things. <laughs>